Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we've got a special guest with us today. I'm on dad duty, but I had to get this video done so that you'd have something for this weekend. So I brought my little man with me today. He's going to help me do the intro to this video and the outro. But what, what I want to do in this video, we get a lot of comments, a lot of questions, um, a lot of you viewers and our followers that want to see some comparison videos. So comparisons between sheep camps and RVs and things that way. And it just so happens that I've got a lot of both here. So we're going to do some comparisons. This might turn into a series where we can do a number of different things. If there's things that you guys want to see um, as far as different comparisons between the two, I'm happy to do whatever you guys want to see. So anyways, today we're going to be comparing some R values. This is probably the most frequent question in regards to sheep camps versus RVs and vice versa is what does R values mean? Insulation values. Um, our camps, they have R19 um, batting in the floor and the ceiling six inches thick and then our walls have an R4 um, foam board and then they equate to about an R11 um, in R value. So very well insulated but what does that mean in real world terms so today what i want to do is i want to fill the propane tanks up on a camp and then also on an rv of similar size they both have thirty thousand btu furnaces in them so should be pretty comparable as far as size um and what we're going to do is we're just going to turn the furnaces on to 65 degrees and we're just going to let them run and see how long we can run on a seven gallon, um, 30 pound propane tank with just the furnace running. So we're gonna do that. That should kind of give us an idea of how well they retain temperature. Um, because we do, I mean, you've probably seen it in previous videos that you know, the RV industry, they rag on the furnaces in the trailers. They use a lot of power, use a lot of propane, batteries are always dead, all that good stuff. So. Really what we're going to do today is we're going to compare them because in my opinion the, the furnaces are actually pretty good. So we're going to see kind of what the difference is between the two. Um, obviously I could alleviate the furnace by burning the wood stove um, but for this particular one we're not going to do that. So we're just going to go straight up head to head just furnace and insulation values and kind of see what the difference is. I think, you know, as I'm filming this, I've already done this comparison. So I know the results and some of it kind of surprised me. So anyways, we're going to get these propane tanks filled up and we'll go from there. So stay with us. just so that they're completely full so that we got a good starting point so that we've got full gas in each of these and we're just gonna see how long they run so we'll get them topped off and go from there All right, so on both of these, both on the camp and on the trailer, I've got the regular regulator set so it can only pull off of one tank. That way we'll have a better idea of what it's doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one on. This should turn green. Once it's green, I know I've got propane. I'll go in and get this furnace turned on. All right, guys, this is the one we're gonna be doing. This one's a Keystone um, Cougar. It does have the climate guard protection, whatever that means. 
should be pretty comparable to this camp. So I'm gonna open it up and we're gonna turn that furnace on. I think my phone lied to me, um, said it was gonna be about six degrees this morning. It's actually three degrees. So we're gonna get this turned on and get the camp turned on and see what happens. All right, so we're here at this in command. This is how this one's all controlled. So if I go to my HVAC, I'm gonna go to my rear. that on we're gonna set it to 65 we're gonna start it so we'll let this baby run and see what it gets us up to and how long it takes us to run out of propane so I'm gonna close this all up shut everything off and let her run all right I'm gonna get this one turned on Set it right at about 65. Fan's blowing. Shouldn't light up here in just a second. Actually, probably better purge the air out of it. Got the air out of the system, now it should light. All right, we've got it running. You can see we got some steam coming out. So we're just gonna let them run and we'll check in on them. So we'll find out what happens. All right, I'm just gonna take a reading just to the wall. We're about 61 degrees, so yeah, 60, 61 degrees in here. So after about six hours, we're up to 60. So I'm gonna go out in that camp now and see what we are out there. The furnace is still running here as well. We're about 26 on the exterior of this. So about four degrees colder on the outside than what the other one is. We're gonna go in, see what we are on the inside. Turn on some light. Just on the wall in here, about 46 it says on that spot. Forty-seven. Yeah, about forty-seven degrees in here. Forty-eight. So a little bit colder in here. All right, guys, I'm just getting ready to leave work here. I just came out. Um, I noticed this furnace isn't running, so hopefully that's because it's reached temperature inside. I hope that it's not because, <laughs> I don't know, that something else is going on. But I did come out and I checked both the camp and the trailer earlier today. And I did notice something, I didn't film it, but I noticed something kind of interesting that the trailer was warming up quicker than what the camp was. And I think a lot of that is just the insulation values in the camp were retaining that cold temperature. I wish I would have taken a temperature before we started to kind of see what was going on there. But just going off what the temperature is of this trailer, on the outside, we're about 20 degrees. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go in and we're going to see what the temperature is inside. Well, I just heard that furnace kick on, so that means we're good. All right, let's just take a temperature in here and see what we're at. About 60 degrees. Yeah, right around there. 57, 61. So... We're gonna say average probably right around 60 degrees in here. So I'm gonna walk over um, to that camp and we'll get a reading on it. All right, so this camp, we're about 15 degrees on the exterior of it. 
14. Let's go inside and see what the temperature is in here. All right. So we're about 67 degrees in here, 68 degrees. 65 so probably about 66 degrees in here um now we're just gonna wait i guess where we're up to temperature so this has been it's been about oh 11 hours since i started um these furnaces so i guess we'll wait now it's supposed to be cold tonight so we'll see how they hold up and what the temperature is in the morning when i get here here we are, morning of day two, 19 degrees on the outside. We did get no oh, inch, inch and a half of snow last night. The furnace is still running, so it feels pretty warm in here. Yeah, right about 60 degrees. Like I say, furnace is still running, so we'll go check the camp, see what it's at. All right, the camp is about 11 degrees on the outside. which I did turn the thermostat down in here last night because I thought we were probably over 65 set. So probably staying about the same in here. So I think maybe I'll bump it up just a little bit and then we'll check on it tonight. Now day three, we got another four inches last night of snow. Um, I just went out to the camp. The camp's still warm, still running. The furnace on this one isn't running as of right now. But it does feel somewhat warm in here. So I'm going to take a reading. Oh, I wonder if we've run out. Of propane now or what's going on because yeah we're about 40 degrees in here let's just turn this on Must be out of propane or something because it's not kicking on so I'm gonna go check that tank see what's going on so we're not out of propane but you can see how low those burners are on that stove they're practically out that tells me that that tanks low enough and that it's cold enough that we're just not getting enough flow um, they're actually gonna go out so that tanks either super low or about out or like I say we're just not getting enough flow when I checked yesterday that tank I figured was about a quarter left now that was on day two like I say it's been super cold um, but as you can see that one just went out these other two are probably right on their way that one just went out so I'm gonna say we're out of propane on day three. All right guys, we just wrapped up our comparison video. It's gonna be a challenge to edit this one because it's going to be boring. Um, it consisted of me going out every morning with the temperature gun, reading a temperature on the exterior and the interior of both the RV and the sheep camp. 
and it just was boring. I did that for several days and videoed it. I probably am not gonna include a lot of that just because it is boring. Um, but the results were kind of interesting. I wish I would have taken some readings beforehand of the camp and the RV as far as temperature differences inside before I started because I noticed something interesting and that was that it took the camp about two, two to three hours longer to reach 65 degrees than what it did with the RV. Now I equate that to it being colder inside, but like I say, without taking a reading beforehand, I can't tell you for sure why that was. Um, but the results were as follows. The RV lasted, I started this Monday morning um, got the propane tanks filled up. It was about four degrees, very cold that morning. The RV lasted Monday, Tuesday, and was dead at about eight o'clock on Wednesday morning. So it lasted two nights and almost three days. So we'll give it a little extra there. It is now Saturday and saturday evening and the camp just barely ran out of propane so as as i said in the intro this was strictly on propane just one tank um, had nothing to do with the wood stove and you lasted quite a bit longer in the camp now i'm going to do up some figures i'll i'll put them on the screen so you can kind of see what that equates to we can do dollar figures you know what you'd save over a period of time or whatever and I realize most of you that are watching probably aren't living in your trailers full-time or your camps um, but what kind of difference does that make even say you want to go in the colder months say you've got a late season deer hunt elk hunt something like that or you just want to get away in the colder months what's that going to equate to what's your experience going to be like now the only variable that that you would have had um, would have been that the, the RV was plugged in. And I do equate that a little bit to it warming up faster, just because in having it plugged in, on that control, you can see when I go to program it, there's a little setting that says fan, and it's on auto. What that's going to do is it runs through the air conditioner, um, and it'll actually cycle that fan on to um, circulate that air better so that could be a little bit of why it warmed up faster um, like I say I think the camp was probably a lot colder inside but without taking a reading and stuff I I don't know on that that's just speculation but anyways I'll throw up some figures I I'm sure a lot of you probably want me to introduce the wood stove now and say oh how long can we run on that if you want a video anytime soon um, that probably wouldn't be super good. Um, I definitely can do that if that's what you want. But I reached out to some of our customers that are staying in their camps full time. Some of you have probably watched Camp Liberty, um, their video, they are staying in theirs full time. I wanna say they're coming up on three years staying in it full time. And then I have another customer, Nick Vile. Awesome, he works with the Forest Service logger, everything, so he stays in his for work. Um, both of them told me with the wood stove going, they're averaging three to four weeks on a tank. So that's with building a fire in the morning and a fire in the evening, and they're averaging, yeah, close to a month on a tank of propane. So that's going to make a huge difference, whereas we lasted just about a week on a tank with just running strictly on the furnace. Um, but yeah, to be able to run a month on a tank, and that would be with them running water heater, fridge, all of that stuff. So very, very impressive what you can do with the wood stove. Granted, the RV doesn't have that option. Um, but like I say, where um, the only variable we had in there in the RV was that it was plugged in. A lot of that, the only reason I plugged it in is because I knew the battery wouldn't last that long. Um, if you are planning on staying in the colder months, you're going to want a bigger bank of batteries that can sustain um, the draw of the furnace. Like I say, I mean, to last two days, that thing practically ran all the time. So it will eat some batteries up. Not that it's the furnace's fault. I mean, you're asking a furnace basically to maintain the temperature in a cardboard box. So can't blame it for that. Um, 
but it is i mean that one has a group 24 just a single battery so makes a big difference in the winter this one has six six volt batteries it's equipped with the solar i had no issues whatsoever with power in it so anyways i hope that this was beneficial i hope it was the comparison video that you were hoping for if not leave it in the comments i i'm happy to address some other things that you would like to see um and just work some things that way like i say i think we can make a pretty fun little series out of this um in some comparison things so if you have any ideas any interests or whatever leave them in the comments i'm happy to do videos on whatever it is that you want so as always thanks for watching we really appreciate you guys if you haven't liked and subscribed please do so we'll see if if I can get my guest star here a little more frequently. He brings a lot to the channel, I take it. But anyways, we appreciate you. Thanks for watching.